Okay, hello everybody. In this lecture, we will look at another example of solving the Laplace equation. So, at this time, we will see how uh, so the ideas we have already explored can be extended in a natural way to three dimensions. So, we look at a three dimensional rectangular box and solve the Laplace equation. Okay, so uh, again, the uh, natural tool that we will uh, adopt is the method of separation of variables. So, the problem is as follows. So, we are given this rectangular box of dim with dimensions a, b and c uh, and so we are told that the there is uh, you know the potential on all the boundaries are specified. So, barring the top which is maintained at a potential of v naught, every other side is grounded. So, the potential is 0 on all other sides and um, so it is immediately seen to be a you know a version of a Dirichlet problem, right? It is a Dirichlet problem because the boundary conditions on you know all the surfaces are, are given and we are asked to find the potential within the box, right? So, it helps to first of all write down the, the Laplace equation in 3D which is just this dou squared u by dou x squared plus dou squared u by dou y squared plus dou squared u by dou z squared equal to 0 and also it helps to write down explicitly the boundary conditions that are available. Uh, to us, right? So, when x equal to 0 and for all values that y and z take and when x equal to a for all the values of uh, y and z, the boundary condition tells us that the potential is 0. Again, when y is taken to be 0 or when y is taken to be b, so we have u of x comma 0 comma z and u of x comma b comma z, both of them separately equal to 0. We are also given that u of x comma y comma z equal to 0 is also 0 and then the final boundary condition is u of x comma y comma c when was z equal to c the potential is v naught, right. So, it is good to specify the problem all that is given to us in, in this language and then make the onsorts. So, the onsort is, is u of x comma y comma z is written as x of x times y of y times z of z now, right. So, you will see that we have to do two rounds of this usual trick of separation of variables. So, we first plug this on zots into the original PDE and so I mean we are looking for solutions of this kind, but basically the idea is that we will stitch together solutions of this kind. There is a way to do this in such a way that the boundary conditions are satisfied and there is this theorem which says that if you have a Dirichlet problem and if you can find one solution then that is the solution, right. So, there is a uniqueness theorem associated with the Dirichlet boundary conditions which we did not go into the details of, but it is true that uh, if you can somehow find a solution then that is the solution and we will see how with you know t finding solutions which are separable and stitching them together in a um, suitable way we can work out the solution for this particular problem. So, uh, we plug it into the or original PDE. So, then we get it in this form d squared x by dx squared yz plus two similar terms involving the other um, coordinates and then you divide throughout by you know the product x times y times z and then you see that the first term becomes 1 over uh, 1 over x times d squared x by dx squared and the second term is 1 over y times d squared y by d uh, dy squared it should be. Okay, so, um, yeah, so this is, a, uh, so this should be d squared y by dy squared and this should be d squared z by dz squared and so now, uh, uh, so indeed and here as well, so y and this is um, z squared. So, we, we, uh, we couple these two terms together. Uh, so, this is z and so this is y. So, uh, it is useful to uh, combine just these two terms together. So, we have 1 over y plus d squared y by dy squared plus 1 over z d squared z by dz squared is equal to minus 1 over x times d squared x by dx squared. So, now comes the key uh, uh, you know argument which goes into this method of separation of variables. So, the idea is that the left hand side is you know contains uh, two terms which are independently functions of y and z, 
but the right hand side is purely a function of x. So you have something which is purely a function of y and z equal to something which is a pure function of uh, x alone for all values of x, y and z. Therefore, the only way that this can happen is if it is a constant and that constant which we take it to be lambda 1 square, right, without loss of generality. You will see in a moment why for the particular boundary conditions that we are working with. So this will turn out to be a suitable choice. Now if we repeat this process, so there is one more round of this separation which we must do. So then we have d squared, so 1 over z d squared z by dz squared uh, minus lambda 1 squared is equal to uh, d squared y by dy squared. And now once again we argue that the left hand side is a pure function of z alone, right hand side is a pure function of y alone. Therefore each of them separately must be equal to a constant and we will call this constant as lambda 2 squared. Right? You will see in a moment why this all makes sense. So now we have this left hand side is equal to lambda 2 squared minus 1 over y times d squared y by dy squared is lambda 2 squared. And so there is, there is another separation constant we have introduced, but it is useful to uh, define another quantity which we will call lambda 3 which depends on lambda 1 and lambda 2 in this manner. So lambda 3 squared is equal to lambda 1 squared plus lambda 2 squared. So lambda 3 is defined using this equation. So now the original PDE is rewritten in terms of three ODEs, right? So we have d squared x by dx squared equal to minus lambda 1 x squared, that's the first uh, ODE. Then we have d squared y by dy squared is equal to minus lambda 2 squared times y. And then we have d squared z by dz squared is equal to lambda 3 plus lambda 3 squared z. Right? So these are, you know, familiar and simple uh, ODEs which we know how to solve. So that's going to give us, uh, you know, sines and cosines or a hyperbolic sines and hyperbolic cosine, uh, cosines for in the third third equation. So, so let's just write down, uh, you know, the solutions in this manner. So x is equal to lab, sine of lambda one x, uh, or cosine of lambda one x, and then we'll have to stitch them together in such a way that the boundary conditions work out. And then for z alone, we have hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine, we could have also used exponentials, it doesn't matter. Uh, so now we start putting in the boundary conditions. So since when x equal to 0 and when x equal to a, you must get 0 and when y equal to 0 and when y equal to b, you must get 0, we must choose only signs. So the cosines will not contribute because at x equal to 0 and at y equal to 0, you must, uh, you know, co cosine will not work out. So the potential has to be 0 and again the boundary condition at x equal to a and y equal to b will force that these lambda 1 and lambda 2 must be integral multiples of pi by a and pi by b respectively, right. So this is like we have seen in the 2D version, which is just that you have to do it, you know, there is one more step involved. So you have, you know, these m's can take all these integer, integer values 1, 2, 3 and so on and likewise with n. Then we have one more boundary condition which is when z equal to 0, the potential must be 0. So we choose the hyperbolic sine, right, for z, the hyperbolic cosine will not contribute. And then of course lambda 3 itself is connected to lambda 1 and lambda 2. If you fix lambda 1 and lambda 2, lambda 3 is automatically fixed. So the overall solution turns out to be this double infinite series. So m going from 1 to infinity, n going from 1 to infinity, there are these undetermined coefficients alpha mn sine of m pi x by a times sine of n pi y by b, then hyperbolic sine of lambda mn z. Lambda mn is of course determined in terms of this m pi by a and n pi by b according to, you know, this uh, relation between lambda 3 and lambda 1 and lambda 2. So there is this final boundary condition which we must impose and solve for these unknown coefficients alpha mn. So it turns out that this is really a Fourier series expansion problem, but there are, you know, it's like a double sum involved. So there will be double integrals to, to, to compute. So basically we argue that, you know, there is this function which is a constant which is expanded in terms of signs, uh, you know, along x and y. So you can treat this entire thing. So when you put z equal to c, so basically you, you treat this alpha mn times hyperbolic sign of this stuff to be the coefficient and that coefficient we know from standard Fourier methods, you know, you can check this explicitly by doing this double integral you know, you will be able to isolate the coefficient of your choice. Every other term will go to 0. If you do the sine of m pi x by a times sine of m pi 
y by b you, you take a, a, an integral over uh, dx and dy uh, you know the limits being from 0 to a and 0 to b uh, respectively and then you get this integral each of these integrals is really the same and you will get 16 so you will get a um, 4 times 4 times 4 there is a pi squared in the denominator so the answer turns out to be quite straightforward at least seem to be just this and only for uh, uh, you know odd odd m and odd n so a sine sine of pi by 2 is is 1 sine of pi by uh, 3 pi by 2 the whole squared again is 1 but even uh, integers m and even integers uh, n are not allowed so the full solution is seen to be this double infinite series where you have uh, summation over m m takes values 1 3 5 so on n also takes values 1 3 5 so on and then now you also have this sine of m pi by x sine n, n, n pi y by b times there is this hyperbolic uh, sine of lambda mn z divided by you know this is a constant right so this came about because this coefficient had this stuff so that is hyperbolic sine of lambda mn c and indeed lambda mn is of course written in terms of uh, m squared pi squared by a squared uh, plus n squared pi squared by b squared the whole thing which is a square root okay thank you